welcome back to Lawrence McKenna Channel on a day when Liverpool have won 3 0 against Forest and it could have been way way more. If you're interested in Liverpool stuff and I want to talk a bit more about Liverpool online but I still wanted to keep a football channel I felt like I was maybe you know just needing to make something where I could just talk wholly Liverpool attract you know people who want to talk about it and not just a bunch of people who wanted to hate. Liverpool did I mean, exactly what they were supposed to do against Forrest. And a little bit more on top of that as well, by the way, mainly because there was another event leading into the game that I think you could argue would have emotionally upset quite a few of the players. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, therefore the players couldn't have put in a good performance or whatever it is, but the goal uh, that Jota scored, because essentially he probably would have been coming in for Luis Diaz or playing in Luis Diaz's position, you could tell instantly that all the players wanted to go over pay a respect or, you know, at least show group solidarity in the name of Luis Diaz. And the same on this channel as well. Uh, I'm really, I, th I'm, I think, I feel confident in saying that at this point, Luis Diaz's parents have been pronounced safe. There was a little, there was like a post that someone did and Luis Diaz had commented below it. And I don't know if that was part of it. Like maybe that made me feel like maybe he's okay. Anyway, the point is, this group is a group of people who really care about each other. And I get it. Like, you know, if anyone's parents are kidnapped, then you would want to uh, show solidarity with them. I don't think that's anything that's exceptional in football. But particularly the way that Jota just ran over, grabbed the shirt straight away. It was clearly something that Liverpool felt was important for them to voice out on the field. And on a day when you could give, forgive Liverpool for being slightly, hey, you know, it's just Forest. What do we do? It's despite the fact that Forest are a very decent side, even though they're sitting 16th in the table, they are technically a very good side and they showed towards the end of the game what they're really capable of, even if they didn't show that pretty much for the rest of the game. You can forgive Liverpool for maybe taking the foot off the pedal, but they did not do that at all. And that's pretty much from the jump. You look at this starting 11 and you say to yourself, that is probably outside of maybe one or two players that you could swap in like for like, like Costas, Simicas maybe for another left back, although I'd say Andy Robertson is a slightly stronger version of that. And Diogo Jota, maybe there's just another variation. Maybe Darwin Nunez, maybe there's another variation there. This is currently the strongest Liverpool team that you can field. Trent at right back, of course, as an obviously in goal. Ibrahim Canate, Virgil van Dijk, centre back. Today, I think Canate and Virgil van Dijk were very confident. Very rarely did they get caught out. By the way, very rarely did Boris put anything forward. So really, is it all that different? But Simicast again, putting in another good performance. I, I felt that Simicast very often doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I'm going to skip beyond the midfield just for a second. It was a classic 4-3-3, pretty much. Liverpool slightly skewed towards Salah. That's mainly because they, I mean, on, on this particular day, Salah becomes more of a playmaker, which is why they skew more over to this side, and he sort of comes wide, whereas Jota cuts more in off that wing, and then Nunez actually can very often end up there or there. I'm going to undo all of that and show you the two boxes where he can be. He very often ends up here or here, which is why when he scored the goal for Salah, he was coming in here and back there, right? Salah came back there. And then the opposite for Mo Salah, where Mo Salah got in because of a Nunez pass from, I think, this side or sort of there through, right? And he's done that a couple of times now. Liverpool are working up this great partnership between Darwin Nunez and Mo Salah. There is something going on there where the two of them seem to have this great connection. Before, we always thought that it was Bobby Firmino who was the one who had the connection with Salah and he was always looking for Salah. Salah seems to have got a much more deliberate relationship with Darwin Nunez now where it's like, hey, I'm looking, I'm looking to make this run, you're going to run here. I'm looking to make this run, you're going to pass here. Though he seemed to have a very what feels like effortless connection. And there are times where you can kind of see them looking at each other and there always seems to be a third wheel in that relationship. In this particular instance, it was Thiago Jota, a player who has been showing his class and why Liverpool bought him very uh, prominently recently, should we say. What I thought was interesting about Jota, we bought him a couple of seasons ago during a period when Liverpool's front three was so dominant and so famous. They were basically the, the most effective front three in the world at the time and probably for a period, the most... Uh, synonymous with being like, there was syn syn synonymy with synergy of these three. And it just meant that he was always going to be seen as fourth choice. But since that three has been broken up, or since that three has kind of disbanded, should we say, rather than been broken up, we've seen Mane go off to Saudi and obviously Bayern Munich, where he wasn't particularly happy in the first place. We've seen Bobby Firmino go off and obviously get a big paycheck for the end of his career. But also, obviously, no, sorry, just get a big paycheck for the end of his career. And then 
Obviously, that means that you get this kind of classic 433, which really, when people are talking about, you know, I mean, I heard it on the international commentary. I mean, the reading that I did on the game where they were like, oh, this is a Liverpool three box three. And I was like, I'm not sure it is today. I mean, you know, Trent pretty much wonders where he wants. And that's part of the brilliance to do with Trent in this game. But like, if you look at where he really is, especially in games like this, all three of these guys are kind of, well, actually two of them are going wide and then one of them will go in. And or vice versa. So if Trent goes in, Sob goes wide. If Sob goes in, Trent goes wide. If Salah comes in, Sobosly goes wide and Trent goes in. They have this kind of, it's not the same triangle as Jordan Henderson, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Salah had. It is a new relationship and a new rotation, which I really enjoy. But what I really love about this formation is, actually more recently we've, we've seen very often like Sobosly coming in either there or there. But very rarely has his average position been there. And actually today, if you were to look at the heat maps, especially if you go like here, his heat map was really red here. I remember looking at it early on in the game and thinking, wow, that guy is, he's really helping Salah get inside here. He's really trying to move Salah closer to Nunez in this and really trying to give these, I mean, really, you can come up with units of like, is it those two? Is it those two? Very often you see like one of them kind of deeper here. I'm gonna come in and bring another color in, probably that. You, one of them goes a bit deeper here and then the other two are kind of running on, which I kind of like. Like, I love the combos that these guys are making and it's similar with the intelligence of Mo Salah at this point is really showing. Now, it might be something he's always had. He always seems to have had great combination play with people in tandem with him. He played off a big man when he was playing in Italy. When he first came in, then we saw that the great combinations he had with the other players. And I think a lot of people doubted that he ever had this kind of what people are calling now playmaking ability. I'm not quite sure it is that in the same way. I feel like it's this combination. And very often he needs, like what's weird is you, you see him need other people to be playmakers alongside him. He is not really like the you know, we've paid a lot of tribute recently to Eden Hazard on his, um, on his retirement. Well, we haven't, but other people have. People kind of spoke about him individually. It's Salah's hookup with other players. It's his understanding with those other people. It's those people who seem to get energy from Salah that I really enjoy watching. And that seems to be Sobosly. Sobosly seems to be savoring playing alongside these guys. His press is incredible. Like there was one point where I saw Sobosly, especially towards the end of the game, Liverpool, I think at the time, like 3 0, why would you bother pressing? He was pressing a whole wave here, and sorry, a whole wave here, and then he pressed a whole wave here, and then he pressed back into this wave here, and then he pressed back there. They actually broke the press because they, they came to this side of the pitch to try to avoid Sobosly. But in the end, Liverpool won it back about here. And I just looked at it and thought, how has he managed to manipulate the play in such a way that the whole team needed to do less work? And really, like Jota, Nunez and Salah didn't need to do that level of work to get there. What I love about it as well is, especially, I mean, you know, I could talk about average positions all day, right? But when you look at this formation, this is probably one of the most balanced formations that I've seen Liverpool have in quite some time. Sometimes you'll see... Sometimes you'll see these guys bunch up a little bit. Sometimes you'll see these guys bunch up a little bit. And sometimes you'll see like a corridor here where these guys are kind of bunching up a little bit. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like I think it all comes down to what Klopp wants. But what this definitely shows is that this was a training game for Liverpool. This was a game where Liverpool went, if we maintain our... Uh, if we maintain our shape, but we also maintain our discipline, then we're going to come away with something here. And they just kept hammering away. It wasn't even hammers, just waves. That was I've not said that word in a while on any of my channels. Liverpool used to come in waves, and it used to be like wave after wave of Mane, then Salah, then Firmino, then Henderson would win it back, then Wijnaldum, then Fabinho would have it. Fabinho was very responsible for a lot of those waves. It was that, that intensity where Liverpool kind of won it back at about this line on the field. They've kind of brought that line forward to about here, where McAllister basically sits, Sobosly sits, and Gravenbuch kind of, Havenbuch kind of floats, which I absolutely love as well, by the way. So I'm, I get it. Like, you know, this wasn't one of those games where everyone's going to be going up. Defining game of the season there. But at the same time, I've spoken a lot about momentum this season. And to get minutes in the legs of some of these players, I think is really important. This guy came in absolutely brimming with confidence. I think he's grabbed the position by the, and ran with it, right? Run with it, not ran. Uh, 
McAllister came in. I think he's been given a slightly different position. That is a lone six position that he's playing here, and he deserves a lot of credit for it. He wasn't a lone six when he first came in at the club. He was playing at the World Cup alongside and mirroring what Messi was doing. He was playing alongside Caicedo at Brighton, and he's come in and had to play arguably one of his least comfortable positions, clearly one of his least comfortable positions, because, you know, there's a lot that he loves to do and he's a very adaptable player, but you get my point. He's enabled the rest of this Liverpool side because it doesn't look as if there's anyone else who's really done exactly what uh, we would say is in terms of like being that six yet. He's been the most identifiable six, but that's kind of what I want to talk about here a little bit, right? Sobersize heat map basically covered this area. Very rarely, actually, did it cover here and towards the end of the game, right? But it covered a lot of this area early on. Obviously, Havenberg covered this area and was kind of here as well. So you could kind of draw like a little, yeah, cylindrical sausage. Is a sausage a cylinder because it's got two? Is a cylinder kind of flat at both ends? I don't know. The point being, right, like both of these guys were basically playing the eights and he was playing a very tentative six, right? But when he first came in, he was very reluctant to that. Sobersai came in, played a very attacking version of that. Sobersai still slightly doesn't look like the Liverpool players in midfield that we're used to. He's kind of still looks a bit like a Real Madrid player that's just slotted in. For years, we spoke about an Asensio coming in. For years, we spoke about a Valverde coming in. For years, we spoke about someone coming into this midfield and doing something different, right? Doing something that felt un-Henderson-like, un-Wijnaldum-like. Thiago did that for a little while. Hasn't because of the injuries, it's kind of petered out. But for a while, it was very much what Liverpool would have considered to be a plan A. Havenberg, uh, Havenberg, ha Havenberg has come in and done something which I think a lot of people didn't expect. I think they thought he would be a lot more timid in this role. I think people thought, oh, you know, this guy's just going to, he's going to be off the bench. He's going to be one of those players that Klopp slowly bled, beds in because, frankly, he wasn't good enough to get in at Munich. And, you know, he, Munich constantly overlooked him. Munich have had plenty of those players. And we know why. And it's not, it's not necessarily because Munich are complacent or they don't value the player that they've got. It's that they've got real quality in that midfield and they've probably got preferable quality because they know we want to play this kind of way. We want to try and keep Musiala over Havenberg. We want to kind of try and keep Asane over Amane. We want to try... They've got preferable players. There are players who fit into the squad and don't. And it's probably the same with people like Thomas Tuchel. He's got players where he's like, he's told, this guy is the future of the club and this guy so far hasn't been. And if you can't find time, especially when you're constantly scrambling to try to keep up at Bayern Munich, not any manager has managed to get his hands around in recent seasons, even though they won the league last year, you don't have time to bet in one of those players. You don't have time to go, all oh, right, this young guy over here, let's get him in. So Hamburg just suffered because of that. Liverpool saw their opportunity and did exactly the right thing and add one more body into this midfield, namely Andre from Fluminense, who's had his comments over the last week saying, you know, I, I'll cover this in another video as well, but you know, I had an offer from Liverpool. I'd already promised Denise that I was going to stay at Fluminense for the entirety of the year, so I had to stay because I felt I'm a man of my word. I love that. The offer came in. It was something that the club considered, but I couldn't. And, you know, again, they looked at it and went, wow, that is a big offer, but you're going to have to come back in January or in December. Getting close to December now, but, you know, let's see where those conversations go. And, he, and then he said, come the end of the year, let's see what happens. If Liverpool add in an Andre, they add in another player that can basically slightly, I think, actually relieve a bit of that on uh, Trent, relieve a bit of the pressure on the back line at the same time by picking up the ball in places slightly ahead of Virgil van Dijk, though I think he will very often cross over. And also just allow maybe McAllister to come in into one of these roles, possibly even allow him to come more centrally, him even to come more centrally, or him to come more centrally and move someone into this kind of a role, put someone else in here and have kind of a diamond. Though, you know, really that you could argue that if Hakpo played here, then he would have been a diamond or, you know. There's an interesting uh, heat map there to be analysed if Andre was to come in and what role he would play, especially as Minamino, when he came on, actually tries to enable a lot more of what these guys do. What I really want to cover in the final part of this is some of the subs that Klopp made. Now, these aren't indicative of a manager who is trying to win a game, right? These were consolidating substitutions and arguably Klopp has become, and his backroom staff, become a lot better at recognising in, within this squad, the substitutions they need to make. Cody Gakpo, a lot Draw there. Cody Gakpo, a lot deeper here. These two were both subs, though actually Harvey 
kind of hugs this area of the touchline here and basically becomes another passing option. Always an out for Trent, always an out for Mo, always an out for Soboslai. Really makes a big difference. And then really they just said, look, like we need to cover this side. There wasn't really all that much danger down here because it seemed as if Virgil van Dijk had this the entirety of this box covered off. And even then it was like, who was it who fouled? I think it was Cody Hakpo kind of dropped in here. Hakpo came in, by the way, as a striker and seems to be playing much more as kind of a creative 10 or a midfielder, although very often those two are interchangeable roles at Liverpool in the first place. And then Simicas, I mean, Simicas is kind of a law unto himself sometimes, so I'm kind of interested to see where he takes it from here. But I, personally, people are saying, oh, we wanted to get rid of him in the summer. I really like his play. I think sometimes he can be a little suspect in defence. There are also times where you look at him and go, he actually dealt really well with what he was offered there and came away with the ball. And statistically, Klopp's going to be looking at that and saying, brilliant. And not only that, a lightning down the wing, always coming down here, always another option. I think it's going to be hard to find another understudy for Robertson. I know that we would have liked Van der Ven from, uh, well, it wasn't Spurs at the time, it was Verda, wasn't it? But someone like that would have been fantastic. But you can't make Virgil van Dijk the captain and then have basically just another centre-back just kind of sitting there. I don't think Van der Ven would have been one of those attacking fullbacks that Robertson or Simicas is. And I think at the time, a lot of people misjudged what it was that they wanted the left-back to do. Loads of people were telling Liverpool that's going to be a back three because Arsenal played... Well, weirdly, like Arsenal didn't play that, but like a lot of people thought that Arsenal basically dropped someone back there and had someone there, someone there, someone there, and that gave you a box midfield with someone coming back there. It, really, that wasn't the case. What's interesting is Liverpool are creating this box with lots of different options and it's freeing up this side down here, right? What they basically said was we don't always need to create the box in the same way. It's a bit too instructive. It's a little bit... Um, we need to look at what the environment is. I did a good, I did a good video. <laughs> I did a video the other day on Gabriel Jesus and speaking about how the environment and the choices that Liverpool, or Arsenal make, but in this case Liverpool, inf are influenced by the flow of the game. If you want to, there are going to be times where Klopp's going to say to someone like Trent, who by the way was found out a lot out here, he was much less in this midfield in the first half because I think they were trying to spread the play a lot more and move Nottingham Forest around. By the way, because they sat deep quite a lot, that then they're going to say, well, why don't we bring in like a Wataruendo and see what he can do in that box? And then you kind of see more like a box like, it's kind of like one of those skewed boxes like that, right? And then really like he's out here, he's offering an option out here. And really Liverpool became quite right-sided, but actually he was dropping in here. Nottingham Forest just didn't know how to exploit Liverpool. If Liverpool was played them again, I'd imagine they would have another easy game. Forest really didn't offer all that much today, apart from there was a great shot from about here cross from Alanga and it sort of cannoned off the bar back over here and then they didn't do anything else for the rest of the game. Uh, yeah, really impressed with the two eights, but really their eights come tens come support strikers for Liverpool at the moment. Both these guys incredibly capable. I love when they drive into this, they drive into this kind of box here. And I'm going to do a video on why this, this area in particular is so important for Liverpool. But Nunez is going to come on there. Jota is going to come on there. Salah wide back in. It is at this point a pretty open and shut case as to what style of Liverpool are going to play game for game. But what's what's great about it is when they do change things up, when they are experimenting out in the field, it becomes this brilliant free flowing football. I, I worry sometimes whether people are going to be able to work out some of Liverpool's systems and what we do then. I think Liverpool have probably got a plan B and C and D or A1, A2, A3. And very often, especially when a team sits deep like Forrest did against Liverpool, we see them try and crack into that a little bit. That's why what I love about it is, right, Darwin Nunez had, I think, five shots today, maybe six, right? I think three of them were on target. All of them were well considered. People talk about Darwin Nunez as chaos. People talk about him as someone who comes into the game and just is chaotic, which makes you think in your head, oh, he takes loads of shots. Oh, he does crazy things. Oh, he does things that, you know, are just going to take people off guard and sometimes will work, sometimes won't work. That, that's, that's well and good, right? And I think there probably are games where you could have accused him of that earlier on. Now he's much more considered. Now he's always looking for the pass, especially when he's in this area for Salah or for Jota or looking for the ball out wide or different to last season, he's looking for a ball over here 
or over here, but not necessarily to find the fullback, to find a Soboslai or to find a Grappenberg. And what's interesting about that is that has ended up, and the, like the combination play of striker and Soboslai in at this position here has basically ended up in, he came in, Soboslai had zero assists at the start of this game. Now he had two come the end of the game because, well, I mean, really one of them was a long ball that was launched down the field and the goalkeeper missed it about here. And that really isn't something that you can attribute to either player. Like really, you know, it was a bit of a speculative thing, kind of old school Jurgen Klopp Liverpool just launch the ball down the field and the seller will do something special. But the other one, you can see what bringing Soboslai into this side does, what having Nunez attack in this area Overlapping and then him getting into this area does for Liverpool. It makes a big difference, is all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I've enjoyed. I enjoy talking Liverpool post game. I'd love to see your comments below. Uh, please do encourage the channel to grow. We're at 1,500 subs already, and I'm really enjoying already the community that we're building. Zero videos. This is the first one. Thank you very much for joining me for it, guys. Really appreciate it. So I got away with the assist. Uh, Luis Diaz's parents are safe. Salah got his goal, Nunez still looks absolutely class, and Jota is not a backup anymore. Uh, that midfield looks class. These aren't the test games. Liverpool have got Man City coming up. I think that is the one that they've kind of got their eye on at the moment. They see City as a little bit vulnerable. They see City as a team that they can cut their teeth against, can try to test themselves against. By the way, just looking at that. Look at Alisson's average position. God love him. God love you, Nottingham Forest. Uh, it's been nice to chat to you guys. I will chat to you again in a little while. Much love. Bye. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already hit subscribe, hit subscribe. See you later.